Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Oh no, I need a table piece and I need it fast. Hey, <laughs> let's dive in. Welcome back to Wood by Wright. We're gonna start this off with another piece of white oak and we're gonna end it with boiled linseed oil. You know how the drill goes. <laughs> yes, uh, a chunk of white oak. Uh, this is five quarters. I have a drawing book to draw out the, the shape I want. And I actually want this one to be ever so slightly off center. So I've kind of kinked the bow a little bit so that the arch of it is over to the side rather than in the middle. Why? Because I want to. Um, after drawing on those two uh, marks close to each other, then we can uh, cut it down. I want to take this down close to its shape with the saw, uh, but I can stay away from it. And at this point, I'm cutting into it. I'm thinking, wait a second, wait a second. The grains on this is running fairly straight. Why Why am I doing this? So uh, grab the, the big hatchet and pop it over. And yeah, that's a lot faster. Um, anytime you can run with the grain, great. If it's going straight, it's fantastic. If not, then you've got to work at it. I did a video recently showing how I generally cut arches, and I do it in the fun way. There's a bit of waste in here that I'm lopping off these pieces, but really I'm not going to be able to make much out of those anyways. So I'm going to cut down with a relief cut, and then come in with a bit, the chisel, bevel down, and then run with the grain, staying just off of that pencil mark. And so I'm going to back up and go at it, and back up and go at it, and I love these points when you can get into it and just hit it, and the pieces just explode away. It is so much fun. Um, very, very enjoyable process. You'll notice that I've been using a lot of these, uh, these cheap hard point saws recently. I'm doing a bit of an experimentation with them and um, for some applications I've really been enjoying them uh, for certain things and I might be doing a video on that here soon. Um, so I'd love to hear, do you guys actually use cheap hard point saws or do you just stick with the, the standard sharpenable saws? But we're going to continue this around the outside. You have to come at it from both directions so that you're running with the grain. And then we can flip it around the other side, cut back the reliefs on that one. And then this one you actually cut towards the middle rather than towards the outside. Uh, this way you can run with the grain, which is very, very important when you're doing uh, something so aggressive of this, uh, as in you're not running close to the grain, you're a long ways away from it. And we're going to do the exact same thing this way. It's just uh, coming to a middle. Bevel down with the chisel allows you to control exact depth that you're cutting at. Um, getting good with chiseling bevel down is an incredible skill that gives you so many more opportunities and uh, ways to work the wood. So... Uh, Using the chisel bevel down is probably the way I use it more than any other. Um, if I'm pairing, it's bevel up, but uh, for a lot of the work, bevel down gives you a lot more control of uh, placement and exactly where you want it. And this is just this is a, this is a very very fun step, uh, blowing out these blocks and. Uh, getting really close to the line and it's it's very surprising how close you can actually get to the line uh, without running over it it goes very very well so just make sure when you come to the other side and take your time but don't go too far i'm going to get it really close to the shape with a spoke shave and uh, this again is very very quick i'm going to be doing all of this with my stanley 51 um, it's a nice plane that runs really well, especially on this outside here. I can take a light shaving on there and it goes very, very well. On the inside, I'm actually going to extend the iron out a little bit because it's going to run on the nose and heel of the spoke. And that makes it so I can do an inside curve. If you rock it back and forth on the bench, you can actually feel where are the bumps on it. Where do I actually need to hit a little bit more? And then I can take it back and, and go at it again. Um, again, going with the grain. So on the outside, I'm starting at the top of the arch and going towards the points. Uh, on the inside, I start at the points and then go towards the middle. And uh, you have to be a little more careful right when you get to that top point so you don't run past and then go into the grain on the other side. And this is, a, uh, this is another rather fun step. Now, if I want to, I could uh, stop with the spoke shave, um, but I am going to go on to a compass plane. Why? Because I have a compass plane, and I need uh, I, I need to validate that purchase. <laughs> this is where you're going to want to take your time, relax, and, and go through it slowly. Refine it, refine it, refine it, and you can do it all with the spoke shave. But as I said before, I've got a compass plane. I'm going to work with it. And with this one, again, you need to start at the top and work your way down. You're not going to run all the way around it because it's only going to be hitting the high spots. I'm curving it until it's a little bit less than the arch that I want, and that way it'll get just the high spots. On the inside, it's going to be the same thing, uh, but you're going to be running to the middle, and you stop at the middle. Don't go past. Um, if you go past, then you're going to be ripping out the grain on the other side and causing tear out. 
Um, so it's a little bit of skill to run to the middle, um, but it goes really quickly. I really only used the uh, the compass plane for uh, two, maybe three minutes at max. Everything else was the spoke shave and chivel. Next, we need to find out where we're going to put these in. And so I use a marking uh, marking gauge to mark in the, the center point for them. And then I can evenly space them out with marks out from that center point. And just kind of eyeball it. I'm not looking for anything dead on perfect, just relatively close. Give me an eighth inch, quarter inch, one way or the other. As long as they are visually spaced out, that's really what matters. Of course, anytime it comes to something that can be visually spaced out, that also means that there's a little bit of artistic intent you can put in here and be a little flexible. Now I'm going to put this whole thing in the vise uh, with it stabilized as if it would be vertical because all of the holes I need to drill need to be vertical. I'm going to start by drilling out a uh, uh, an eighth inch hole in the middle for the auger bit so, so it doesn't split out the wood because there's a big chance that I'm just going to split this out. And then I'm going to come in with my inch and a half wood owl auger bit and run it down. And just like that, it's a candle holder. Um, really quick process. One of the fun things with the votive candle holder is all you need is an inch and a half auger bit, and you can make anything into a candle holder. And I want to test it out, put these in, make sure that that's what I want. And yeah, I'm going to level out the bottoms a little bit because some of them weren't quite perfect or weren't uh, exactly where I want. The auger never leaves you a perfectly clean bottom. And I don't need a perfectly clean bottom. I just want to get rid of any chips on there. After that, it's all about looks and uh, detailing it out. I'm going to kind of point the tips of this a little bit so that they look a little bit better. And then we're going to start chamfering. Um, why chamfers? Because, well, chamfers are what separate us from the animals. Um, I don't know where I heard that before. <laughs> uh, lots of little cleanup things. Make sure that everything feels good. Um, and because I'm going to be finishing this boil in soon, I'm just going to hit it with some quick 400 grit sandpaper. Uh, this just clogs the pores a little bit so that the oil can soak down in, uh, kind of wicks it a little bit farther. And so I get that more of that contrast with the oak. Um, I don't do that with maple because maple, I don't want the blotchiness. But in oak, the blotchiness is what you want. It's that grain separation, and uh, particularly if you're showing off medullary arrays. Um, homemade boiled linseed oil, wipe it on, let it sit, let the wood soak up as much as it wants. And when it's done soaking it up, wipe off the excess and apply some paste wax. And that's it. That's one of my favorite finishes because it's relatively easy. It looks good. You can still feel and see the wood afterwards. It's nothing that is uh, um, shiny or uh, finished looking. It's actually just a very pleasant look. Push some candles in, light them up, and uh, we can play with this thing. It's ready to sit in the middle of the table and uh, for the kids to uh, try to play with and be mesmerized. But uh, yeah, a uh, fun little project. These are really easy to make and you can make them in any shape and style you want as long as you have an inch and a half auger bit. That's really all you need to make something like this. And you can make them in squares and triangles and off-center arches. Just a fun project. So there you have it. Uh, this is a fun little centerpiece votive candle holder. Uh, start to finish was less than an hour and I kind of like it. I, I tried to make it just a hair off center just to annoy certain people. So if you find that weird that it's like all over here, uh, I'm sorry, but I like doing that. Um, it makes it for a bit of a conversation piece. And if it's gonna be in the center of the table, it's always nice to make it a conversation piece. And I like this, really simple, really fast, grab a piece of wood, have fun at it, and it is a blast to make because you get to blow those chips out. Incredibly fun. I really enjoyed this one. So uh, less than an hour, you need to whip one up. Uh, there you go. Uh, and it's one of the fun things with the votive candle holders is you're just drilling an inch and a half hole in a block of wood and voila, you've got it. It's a fun project. If you need a last minute quick Christmas gift, there you go. <laughs> so I hope you like this. Uh, if you have any other thoughts, comments, snide remarks, or even just want to put a comment down below, thank you. That does help out the channel. Anytime you comment or you hit like, share, subscribe, thank you. That helps the algorithm and gets us in front of more people and is a wonderful thing. On top of that, if you want to take it one step farther and really help out the channel, there are a bunch of names over here. Those are all of the fantastic, wonderful, benevolent, and amazing people over on Patreon. And without patrons, uh, we wouldn't exist. Between patrons and members, uh, you guys are the ones who support this channel. Uh, we don't take on sponsorships, so that I can say what I want to say, and I want to say thank you. Uh, without you guys, we wouldn't be here. Thanks for keeping the lights on, and I think I'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Not exactly my brightest idea, but... It's got potential.